Hello, welcome to the Starry Starry Night event coach workshop. Uh, I'm Susan Ogden. I am one of the supervisors for this event and I'm hoping we can get all your questions answered today. I know this is, this feels like it's a very big, hard event, but um, I've been where you are. I was a coach when my kids were in the program. So um, hopefully I'll be able to alleviate some of your fears. Um, well, I think we're gonna just go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to share uh, some things on the screen here, just a sec. Okay, um, this document is on the uh, on the Macomb SO dot org um, Starry Starry Night webpage. All of these documents that I'm going to show you are on that page. Um, this is just the uh, agenda for what we're going to talk about today. Um, so this event uh, is on a two year rotation. Um, obviously things got a little blown up with COVID, but um, this, is, this will be considered the first year of the deep space focus. Uh, and we'll have deep space again next year. So every year we do have a section on the solar system in general. And um, we also have uh, the constellations and star charts. But then um, part three rotates every, every two years. And so this is a deep space focus with a special topic of telescopes. Um, in a couple of years, we'll switch back to the solar system focus. So in addition to general things about the solar system that we have every year, we'll have things specifically on planets and asteroids and things like that. Um, the, let me go, I'm going to show you the rules here and we'll kind of go through the rules. Um, so the kids will be taking a, a written test. It's a sit down written test. It's not stations. And, you know, they'll have all the various types of questions, true and false, multiple choice, matching, fill in the blank, short answer. I'll ask them to sketch a diagram or two uh, and we'll talk about those. Um, so in part one, uh, we'll talk about the general solar system. Uh, there are glossaries on the macombso.org star starry night page, and the link is there that you can see. Um, we will also cover orbital mechanics in part one, so rotation, revolution, uh, what makes astronomically what's a day, what's a month, what's a year, that kind of things. Um, we'll also talk about seasons and why we have seasons on the earth, uh, moon phases and um, eclipses. There are solar eclipses, lunar eclipses and a couple different types of each of those. Um, part two, we'll talk about the celestial sphere. And that is basically um, just some um, terms that the kids will have to recognize. We usually cover those just on the matching uh, section. Um, and then we'll also cover constellations. And these, this is the list of the constellations and the star or star clusters within those constellations that the kids need to know. So when you see the star charts, you'll see there's a lot of different constellations on the star charts. They only have to know this particular list. OK, so when you're teaching them the star charts, you're going to want to start with highlighting just these particular constellations uh, and, and stars and clusters. Um, I will show you in a little bit um, what those star charts look like and what the kids will have to do with them. Um, then part three. Uh, there will be a series of written questions and visual identification of galaxies and nebulae, as well as questions about the life cycle of stars. So again, there's a specific galaxy 
uh, uh, sorry, a specific glossary on galaxies and nebulae and life cycle, um, which is separate from the general glossary uh, on the website. So uh, they'll have to know about galaxies. What are they recognizing the various shapes and the characteristics of them? Um, different nebulae, what are they? Um, the differences between them. Two of the nebulae are um, the planetary nebula and the supernova remnant are actually covered in the stellar evolution section because they have to do with the um, remnant that the that a dead star ends up um, becoming. So then they'll have to understand stellar, stellar evolution, um, how the star goes, you know, how it's born, how it goes through the main sequence. And then it ultimately becomes a red giant when it's running out of fuel and then it dies and then it becomes a particular kind of remnant. And the remnant that it becomes depends solely on the mass of the star. And the kids will need to understand that. Um, and let's see, then this year um, we'll also be looking at telescopes. There's a discrete list of telescopes on the website, um, and I will show that to you also. Um, and they need to know, they need to be able to recognize the photo of the telescope, as well as know the important things that that telescope has discovered or will discover, why it's being launched, when it was launched, when it will be launched, things like that. There are some earthbound telescopes and some space-bound telescopes. Um, so that in general is the rules. There's about 120, 130 points on the test, um, about 65-ish questions. There are tiebreaker questions, which are separate uh, on the test. Um, let me show you a template of what the test looks like. So the beginning of the test will be the visual identification of um, galaxies and nebulas and telescopes and all those pictures are posted on the Starry Starry Night page. Um, they will not have to recognize any photos other than what I've, what I've given you. Uh, so there's a discrete list of those. We will watch a slideshow all together uh, for the kids to be able to recognize these. We spend um, 20 seconds on each slide. And then once we're through with the 10 slides, we go back through and cover them each for three or four seconds just so that the kids can get something they missed the first time around. Um, then we'll have a section of multiple choice. And then there's a section of fill in the blank, you know, fill in the blank or give me a word or a partial sentence or something like that. Um, and these are, these can be a little more difficult, uh, but not necessarily. Some, some of them are just one word. Some of them, they don't need to give me, uh, you know, complete sentences or anything. We're looking for a word or a phrase um, for general questions like that. And then I'll ask them to draw maybe a moon phase, maybe a particular eclipse type with the bodies involved, um, maybe something about seasons, how the earth and the sun uh, are oriented in a particular season, things like that. I'll have them sketch that out. Uh, then we'll have a section on matching with the telescopes. And then we'll have some of the glossary terms, also a matching. And we'll either have terms with the definitions listed for them to plug in the definition to the term, or we'll have it vice versa. We'll have a definition. Uh, uh, they'll have to place the definition, place the term in, in the definition. Either, either way, we can do this. Uh, then, we'll have a section on the star charts. So star charts, these are posted online also. This is what the kids will start with. So you've got names, you've got um, 
the outline of the shapes and which stars specifically are in that particular constellation. So this is what you'll start with and you'll highlight the, the ones that the kids need to know. Then as they learn these, and this, I tell you, this looks difficult to me, but the kids get it. There will be one of the kids on your team that actually really gets this well. Um, and they'll be the star chart kid. Uh, so once they start learning uh, the constellations and they get fairly good at it, you can take away the names and then they'll end up seeing the shapes. And then you'll take away the shapes and this is what they see. A bunch of dots on a page. Believe it or not, the kids will get this. With some time, they will get this. This is what they will see on the test, all right? So on the star charts that are printed on the website, there's a date and uh, the times, they're all taken on the 15th of the month at 11 p.m. But there's a date on these star charts that are posted. There will not be a date on the star charts that they see on the test, okay? So they'll have to get it from um, the stars that they see. So for example, here's Orion. Orion is in this spot of the sky uh, at a certain time of year. Some of the constellations are only in the sky um, during certain seasons. Some of the constellations are in the sky all year round. Those are called the circumpolar constellations and they're all around Polaris, the North Star. Um, and that is something the kids should know too. What are the circumpolar constellations? What are the constellations that are in the sky the whole year? Um, the, going Susan, back to the- Susan, yeah. we have a question. Okay. Uh, we would like to know that when, the question is for fill in the blank, will there be a word bank? Uh, there will not. The only word bank section will be the matching. Uh, but for the regular fill in the blank, there will not be a word bank. Um, it'll be just something the kids need to pull out of their brains. Um, so back in, in the test, um, the what's going to happen with the star charts, they'll be given that blank star chart with um, a constellation circled, so the grouping of stars circled, or there will be an arrow pointing to a specific star or cluster, star cluster, and the kids will have to identify the constellation or the star or cluster, and they will put their answers on this sheet. So number 45 might be a box around Orion, so they will put Orion here. They don't have to write anything on the star charts. They can, if they want, to get themselves oriented where they are, what season, where, you know, where they are in, in space, but we don't actually look at these star charts. So they're not gonna be responsible to draw in all the constellations. All they're gonna be responsible to do is recognize a constellation or a star, okay? And then they'll just give us the answers here. And there'll be about 10 of those. 10, 12, something like that. And then there will be a page of tiebreakers at the end of the test. And these will be um, maybe a little more in depth. It will be um, on the material uh, that's in scope. So it won't be something out of scope, but it might be a little harder question and they'll be worth more points. So each um, question will have a point value next to it. So the kids will know this is a one point question, this is a two point, this is a three point question. Um, so, you know, one strategy, they could go through and answer the one point questions, you know, you, they could do that if they want. Um, but those give them uh, an idea as to the difficulty level of the questions. And they're gonna be, the easy questions will have basic content, um, they might be multiple choice rather than fill in the blanks, like um, how many moons does Earth have? That's a fairly easy question. Um, a hard question, a three point question would be more advanced content or a fill in the blank rather than multiple choice um, or you know something that requires a sentence or two. 
uh, for example, why does the moon always show the same face to the earth? Um, and then they would say something about tidal locking or synchronous rotation. Those are big words, but the kids can get it. Um, I have a sample quiz posted on the website that gives you an example of uh, some hard and easy questions for each of the topics. Susan, we have a couple more questions. OK, I can't see the chat right now, so yes, I'm aware. Right. That's why I'm interrupting occasionally. Yep, that's fine. So it, uh, a question about star charts. Will the blank star chart label the planet names for reference? Yes, if a planet is in the sky that time of that during that month, the planet will be in there and it will be labeled. That, that's the only label they will see on that star chart. Another question, will the team take the tech, the test at the same time or individually? Uh, they will take the test as partners, so they'll take it at the same time and they can, this, this is a fairly long test as you saw, it's about 10 pages and they can pull that test apart if they want to. We make sure it's all stapled together at the end. So if you've got one kid who's the star chart kid, they can pull the star charts off and that last that answer sheet and start working on those while the other partner's working on the rest of the test. All right. So uh, they do take it together and they uh, but they can split it up. OK. Um, so I do have a sample, a very quick, you know, short quiz that's posted on the website that gives you a, a, a clue about what we consider hard questions and easy questions. So for example, in the re revolution rotation topic, we could ask a multiple choice question. The scientific term for a planet's trip around the sun is, and then we give them choices. Or we could say, name a planet that rotates in a retrograde motion and they would have to give us one of those planets. So that's a little more difficult. Um, and for example, it takes one day for the Earth to spin on its axis. That's a little fill in the blank. That shouldn't be too difficult. But then a more difficult question would be, how many days does it take for the Earth to travel twice around the sun? We wouldn't get any more uh, math. This is, this is about the only math that they would get. <laughs> that they might get in the test. And we wouldn't go beyond two years to add 365 and 365. And the fact that we've shown you this question probably means it won't be on the test, but you never know. Um, so you can take a look at this. Here's an example of something they may have to draw, a picture of a wax, waxing crescent moon. Um, there are eight phases of the moon that they need to know. Waxing crescents, waning crescents, half, full, new, things like that. Okay, those are there are eight of those. Um, all right, so you can kind of see through here, um, you know, easy questions, hard questions, things like that. Okay, so we've given you that little quiz so that you can you can uh, see kind of what we think of as easy questions and more difficult questions. Um, let's see, I want to show you um, the images that the kids may have, that the kids will have to know. So we've given you here a list of galaxies, nebulas and clusters, and then we've given you the pictures and they're labeled. So for example, for the Andromeda galaxy, they could call it M31 if they want to, and they'd get full credit, or they can just say the Andromeda galaxy and they'd get full credit, okay? Um, so we've given you all of the galaxies and nebulas here, all the star clusters, and you're probably getting dizzy. But I mean, some of these things are just gorgeous. You know, space is awesome. And you know, the, hopefully the kids you have on this event will agree and will think that space is just incredible. Um, a few other things. Uh, spelling does not need to be perfect. Oh, before I go into other things, I also wanted to show you the telescope table. 
All right, this is again posted on the website. Um, so they will, here's a picture of the telescope, the particular telescope, and then the name of the telescope, the purpose, for example, the Kepler was hunting planets when they were launched, if they were launched. So this page is the ones that are in space. And then some findings or things that they, that they learn from this telescope or that they plan to learn. <clears throat> and then the next page is the Earth-based telescopes. Um, and there are just a few of these also. So again, they recognize this particular picture of the telescope. And then, uh, so that would be for the slideshow at the beginning of the test. And then um, the, during the matching section, they would have to know something about the findings or when it was launched or uh, what, you know, what the telescope is here. It's an array of a bunch of telescopes, things like that. Um, okay. So um, other things, the, the spelling doesn't need to be perfect as long as we can figure out what it is they're trying to say. That's good because I know Beetlejuice is hard to spell, things like that. Um, as long as it's clear what is in intended, we're good. Um, they can only bring pencils into the testing room. They can't bring notes. Once you get to junior high and high school, uh, the kids can bring in notes. Sometimes they can even bring in binders to some of the events. In this event, we're asking no notes. Okay, so this just comes from their little heads. Um, they can obviously work with their partner, talk with their partner um, softly, you know, so they're not giving answers away. But um, they, you definitely want them to work together. So that's something that you will um, work with them uh, as to how to work as a team, work as partners. Um, they can individually, you know, you can, you can say, okay, this kid's the, um, this kid knows all the pictures and the other kid knows the constellations and this kid understands galaxies and nebulas and the other kid understands solar system and, you know, things like that. So uh, the questions will be all mixed up as far as topic, all right? So there's not any one section that um, that will have, aside from the telescopes, so the telescope section, there's no one section that will have a particular topic, like matching, there are gonna be various topics, and uh, uh, I'm sorry, fill in the blank or, or multiple choice, they're gonna be a mix of topics. Um, and as I said, they, they can pull the test apart if they want to. So the goal isn't to, ask tricky questions or to, you know, to try to trick them or confuse them. Um, there'll be a mix of easier and more challenging questions um, with appropriate point values, but all of the information that we ask them about will be able to be found in the resources that uh, we give you. And I want to show you those resources. Uh, I think I have to we have another question. Okay, sure. You mentioned a quote half moon, and the question is: Is that a first quarter moon? She's yes. uh, asking for a friend. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. So you could uh, you could call it either one. Yes. Okay. We have another question: Is this a time test? If so, how long will it be? Uh, it is a time test, and the kids will get essentially 30 minutes. Uh, so there will be a few minutes of instruction at the beginning of the test, and um, then we'll start right in where uh, with the slideshow. We'll all take the slideshow together. Then they're able to get to the rest of the test on their own. So by the time we finish the instruction and actually get them going, they probably have about 25 minutes. And it's a long test, and the kids, most of the kids may not finish the test, and that's okay. Because as supervisors, we need to write tests that will spread out the scores so that we can see who are the teams who really know their stuff and who are the teams who need a little more help. They needed a little more work. Uh, so if they don't finish the test, they should not be um, 
upset about that because many tests, many uh, teams don't finish the test. So this isn't like in school where you're going to get an A if you finish the test and get all the answers right. This is um, how you compare against all the other teams. You may only, a, a high score out of 130 points, um, a, a good score, a really good score would be anything over 100. All right. Um, we've had teams get close to 120 out of 130, which is very rare. Um, but they will not get all these answers right and, and may not even finish the test. But that's okay because it's just um, you're trying to compare yourself with the other teams. Okay. Um, let's see. I need to, I want to show you the website. So let's see. So here's our Starry Starry Night page. Can you see this, John? Okay, I'm going to assume you can see I, this. I can. Okay, good. Uh, so here's our Starry Starry Night page, and we found this by going to macombso.org, clicking on the events and then clicking on Starry Starry Night down here, okay? And then you'll get this page. Um, and here we've posted all the resources that I've talked about. Um, so you've got the handout from today. Uh, we've got all the star charts printed for or posted for you, so you can print those out. Uh, we've got the page of the images of galaxies and nebulas and star clusters. We've got the telescope page. Then we've got those couple of glossaries. Now these glossaries look, they're, they're two, three pages each. They look daunting. Um, but I tell you, when I was coaching this event, the glossaries were about 30 or 40 pages. And so we've, you know, we've uh, whittled it down over the years. Um, so hopefully this won't seem too daunting for you. Uh, to teach the kids. Um, so there's a glossary, there's a general glossary. This glossary for the solar system, this probably shouldn't be posted for this year. What you're going to want to look at is the general glossary and the glossary for deep sky objects. This specific glossary for solar system will come, come back in a couple of years. So don't worry about that one. In fact, we'll probably take that off of the, off of the page. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, then we've got the sample test questions with a key. Um, this example scoring feedback we would use at practice tournaments, and we're not having a practice tournament this year. So you won't need to worry about this feedback. If you do this event next year, uh, what happens is during a practice tournament, you, the kids won't, you won't get the test back, but you will get a sheet that explains how many uh, points they got on each topic so that you can, you know, you can see kind of where they need more work. Um, so hopefully next year will be a regular year. COVID will be manageable and um, you'll be able to have practice tournaments. But for this year, the example scoring feedback is moot. Um, then we've got the test template. Feel free to use that to create your own tests. And then um, we've got some useful online resources. So this- I have another is, question. Okay, sure. What if the team is a team of one? Is that calculated into the scoring? It is not calculated into the scoring. And we do have teams of one. Um, and in years past, we've had kids like that actually do very well on the test. We've had individual kids get medals on the test. So unfortunately, no, we don't account for that. But um, they can't. They do have the ability to do very well on their own. I I hope everybody has partners. But every year we've got a couple that are that are just individuals. Um, so I've got this list of online resources for you. The internet is uh, seemingly infinite, but um, we have found some good sources for each of the topics. So 
these are the resources that we use, that we're going to use to, to write the test from. All right. So in addition to all the other resources, the glossaries, the pictures, all that that we've posted, these are the resources you, you will go to to learn about galaxies and nebulas, to learn about the life and death of stars, things like that. OK, if you want to create your own star charts, I've given you the link where you can do that. But uh, we've posted them, so you probably don't need to do that. All right. So of all you can look at other resources online. But just know that these are the resources that we will use to write the test from. OK. Um, all right. I think that's all I have. Oh, I take it back. There is one more thing posted here. There is a slideshow from a past workshop that we did. And it will get you started on some of the topics. All right, so let me show you a little bit about what's in here. So here's, you know, a couple things on seasons. All right, it explains why we have seasons. All right, there's a few pages there. Here are the phases of the moon. All right, that the kids need to know. A little bit about lunar eclipses and solar eclipses. All right, so this slideshow will get you started on all of these topics. Okay, a little bit on the celestial sphere, which is basically just terminology. Some tricks on how to get around the star charts, on you know how to tell the kids, um, have the kids tell stories to each other about. Um, Queen Cassiopeia and, you know, how she's riding her, you know, her, um, um, you know, her swan. I can't think of the swan's name off at Cygnus. And she's riding her flying Cygnus through the sky and things like that. So these are little tricks to help the kids figure out where they are on the star charts. Tell, have them tell stories, make up stories to each other. Um, formation of a solar system is not in the scope this year, so you probably don't need to worry about this, but the life cycle of stars is. And here's different types of galaxies, types of nebulas. So hopefully this will get you started. Um, there's some good resources here. Um, all right. So I think that's all I have for you. Are there any other questions? Let me um, see if I can see in the chat here. Here's your last chance. <laughs> we have a question that's coming in. OK, cool. Um, how often? to meet to study. Um, this is a weird year. Uh, so it's hard. It's like I coach a high school team and some of our teams are meeting in person and some of our teams are meeting virtually over a call like this. But in a regular year, I recommend, uh, and this year, I recommend meeting with them once a week. Um, and for, 60 minutes, if you can keep their attention for 60 minutes uh, once a week, that's probably a good, uh, a good um, rate of meeting. Okay, anything else? We have another question coming in. All right. I can tell that someone is typing. Okay. I can't see that on my end. So I'm hoping that we've answered a lot of questions. I'm hoping that we've allayed a lot of your fears. 
um, because even though this topic seems huge, and, and it is, um, we've given you the resources that you need to be able to help the kids through it. And we've limited the, the resources to, you know, so that hopefully you'll be able to, you know, not use the whole internet to try to um, try to te teach everything. Just use the resources we've given you and you'll be great. Um, your son's looking for a partner. How can he connect with one? So that will be something that you talk to your, your team's head coach about. So the head coach should be um, the one who is helping you find partners for your son. All right. So hopefully you're a part of a, a school team or a homeschool team and you need to talk to your head coach about that. This person is welcome to contact the tournament director as well. If there's a problem that isn't solved if, or they need some advice. Okay. But your, you your advice is good. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much for attending. And I hope you're all good to go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you're welcome.